Okay. So this is a review of Old Friends Not Forgotten. Clone review. And holy crap. What one episode that was. So after the Trace, Rafa, Ahsoka arc, we're finally getting into what I think everyone's watching the Clone Wars for, which is the Siege of Mandalore. It's finally happening, and uh, it's looking pretty good so far from the first episode we have of the arc. Wow. So they, you know, they have the little intro sequence where the little narrator is doing a little voiceover. He's doing a voiceover over the current state of what's going on in the Clone Wars. And we see Death of Balaba and young Kanan, Caleb Boom, whatever you want to call him. We see them. We see Plo Koon on Katan Moidia, which obviously, where he dies. And we see Ayla Secura on Flusha. Rest in peace. Anyway, so yeah, we see those. It's kind of setting up for what's to come in episode 3. If you've watched episode 3, you, you'd know. Um, I'd be surprised if you haven't, to be honest. Like, why are you watching the Clone Wars if you haven't seen episode 3? That just doesn't really make sense. We find Kenobi and Anakin on Yabana, I think it is. And we actually first see K um, Cody and the 212 Battalion fighting on a bridge. A nice long bridge. So we do see a small droid blockade, about a thousand strong, holding them back. They're, they're not doing well. They're getting... Uh, they're getting destroyed, and they can't find a tactical droid, so they, they don't really have any way to to win. I'm not sure how finding the tactical droid would help them win, because they still have to get to him. That's besides the point, and um, yeah, they're just not having a good time. So Cody is about to get blown the hell up by a missile, before Kenobi jumps in and destroys it in a very cool looking sequence. We saw it in the trailer, it looks amazing. We can see that he, the, you know, the battle has taken his toll on him, he's kind of kind of getting exhausted with all the fighting. On Yabana. But he saves Cody and the the two top fall back behind some uh, destroyed equipment, I guess, ATTs and whatnot. And they cite Cody t tells Kenobi that they haven't been able to see the tactical droid, so they don't know what to do, how to win. Where is Anakin? And he's like, I'm right here. He's just chilling on the bridge. You know how it is. He's literally standing. He's not undercover. He's just standing up, just casually dodges a bullet. What's going on? Why are you hiding? What's what's the problem here? I Bro. So being the cocky Jedi that he is, you know, he doesn't get into cover. In fact, he stands on the cover that they're under. He doesn't get shot. doesn't die. Just casually talks to Kenobi. Saying that the 501st, they finished their battle, so they came to help Kenobi. His plan is to just casually walk right up to the, the blockade. And just go, yeah, I surrender. This man's Anakin Skywalker, legendary Jedi throughout the war gonna surrender. I mean he's walking up to them while they're shooting and they're just not hitting him. He's not even got his lightsaber out, he's literally just walking up to them. Like it ain't no thing. So they cease the fire, the droids cease the fire and begin to aim directly at Anakin. And as they're about to shoot, he says hold your fire, I surrender. Legendary Jedi Anakin Skywalker surrenders to the droid army. So as he's saying he surrenders you know, he's congratulating the droid forces. We see R2 little uh, antenna eye thing pop up. And he goes back down. And uh, we see Rex and the Fire First just hanging under the bridge, just chilling, vibing. Probably been there for a good 10 minutes, you know, it's, it's hurting their arms. So the droids go get the tactical droid. So right, this Jedi surrendered. What, what should we do with him? Because, you know, he's the big brain droid. He's got the big brain. You fools, this is a trap. Shoot him. And at that moment, Anakin yoinks the tactical droid to him, chops off his head. And then the fire first can fucking up from under the bridge with their little jetpacks. I should have mentioned they're wearing jetpacks. But they are. They're flying up, fly at the droid forces, and there's the scene we saw in the trailer where they're destroying all the droids, which I thought was on Mandalore. Turns out it's not, it's on Yabana. And yeah, you just see a nice little destruction fest. The droids die. Now, as the clones are destroying the uh, little outpost, the blockade, whatever, that was on the bridge, Admiral Lauren contacts Anakin and says, Yo, we've received a communication from Fulcrum. I wonder if we've watched Rebels, I wonder who that is. Mm. They receive a communication from Fulcrum. They think it might be Saw Guerrera. Something like that Onderon. Maybe maybe the uh, revolution has gone wrong. But no, it hasn't. And as a matter of fact, they better go to the ship to uh, receive this transmission in person. So they go up to the Venator. They walk into the command room like, what's so, uh, what's so important you have to call us here? Oh my god. And there we see Ahsoka and Bo-Katan. Now you can kind of feel Anakin's like, 
He's not, he hasn't seen Ahsoka in ages. He doesn't know how she is. And he's just like, oh my god, it's Ahsoka. So he tries to, you know, small talk, you know, find out how she is, what she's been doing. Turns out she's with Bo-Katan on Mandalore because they found more. So bo and Ahsoka, they come to the Venator and they're like, yo, basically, we know where Maul is. He's on Mandalore. We need the Republic to help. Catch Man, catch Maul. Re retake Mandalore. Simple as, really, you know. The Jedi get Maul. Bo-Katan gets Mandalore. Seems like a good deal to me. Everyone's like, how do you know Maul's on Mandalore? Bo-Katan's like, well, he arrived there two days ago. Ahsoka goes about how she was on Obadiah, which is where the Pikes were, which we saw last episode, how she found out where Maul was. And then Anakin's like, what are, you, what are you doing on Obadiah? Obviously, this planet has a reputation with the Pikes. So Anakin's a bit confused. But she's like, that doesn't matter. Basically, Maul's on Mandalore. We need the Republic's help to go catch him. And lay siege the city of Sundari, if, if, you, if you can do that. But everyone's like, bro, this is a lot of treaties that are going to be broken here. So that you know, sparks an argument between them. You know, bo wants Pandora to be freed. But obviously, Kenobi has to talk to the Republic about this, the Jedi Council. So that's what he does. And um, while that's going on, they, everyone, bo you know, they have a bit of an argument. She brings up his team, who we know, everyone felt feelings for. He's now dead. He's like, bro, come on. I'm not going to let my emotions cloud my judgement. We know he wants out Mandalore. That's just who he is, you know. That's his that's his, his character. But he goes to uh, confer with the Jedi Council. bo goes back to her ship. And then it's like with Ahsoka and Anakin. And Anakin's like, I've got a surprise for you. So as they're walking down the uh, corridors of the Venator, you know, the clones are saluting Ahsoka. She doesn't think they should because she's not a part of the Republic anymore. But Anakin's like, yo, look. They remember what you went through for them. It's a sign of respect. You know, they respect you as a commander. Whether you're part of the Order or not. They don't care about that. So what are these surprises? Well, surprise number one is the clones with the Ahsoka helmets. We see uh, Rex and Little, like, a brigade 501st troops wearing Ahsoka helmets. Oh, that was pretty fucking cool. I, st I still don't like the colour clash, but it's still cool nonetheless. So that was that was fun. We saw them. Ahsoka's like, bro, what the fuck? This is wild. And then surprise two. Is General Grievous a Sultan Coruscant? Wait, I'll be right. Grievous is a Sultan Coruscant, as we saw in Episode Three. This is where the episodes sort of, sort of line up together. Episode Three here, the Clone Wars here, they're slowly coming together. They actually touch on the 2003 Clone Wars, where they talk about how Shakti is guarding the Chancellor on Coruscant, but obviously it's a big assault. Mace Windu has lost contact with the Chancellor, so. Anakin and everyone's forces have to go to Coruscant. They'll be there within the hour, you know, speedy. And that'll obviously lead us to the events in episode 3, the opening, where they're assaulting Coruscant. So they're all tying it all together because the 2003 Clone Wars wasn't made, was made non canon by the new Clone Wars that we get. But they're also taking elements from the old Clone Wars and making them canon in the new Clone Wars and the new Disney canon. So, Shakti is defending the Chancellor. So, I think her canon death is at the hands of Anakin in the temple and not on the invisible hand. No, it annoys Ahsoka because it resonates with her. So obviously, kind of like, yo, people of Coruscant need us. They outweigh the needs of the people of Mandalore. Obviously, it's just the Chancellor that needs it. The people of Coruscant don't really care. They're not the ones being attacked. Well, in the 2003 episode they are. But they're not the ones really being attacked by the droids. It's just the Chancellor. So really, you should be f helping the people of Mandalore because they're the ones suffering under Maul, not the people of Coruscant, who's just had the Chancellor being kidnapped. We have many Chancellors. So yeah, it really resonates with Ahsoka, and because obviously her time with Rafa and Trace, it shows that how people need the Jedi and how people how people view the Jedi. So it resonates with her and her like recent exploits, I guess. So she kind of feels what, what people need the Jedi, like the slaves on um, Kessel need the Jedi more than the Chancellor, or more than the people of Coruscant. But no, he, he takes priority. So Anakin's like, right, look, we'll promote Rex, make him the commander, I'll divide the five first, and then so I can go with Rex as an advisor. 
because obviously she's not part of the Republic anymore. Everyone makes that clear. So, you know, Commander X, I guess. So that gets greenlit, that's alright. And Anakin gives Ahsoka the second surprise, the proper surprise this time, not the attacking Coruscant. So that surprise is her old lightsabers. But blue! Much better. So yeah, basically her lightsabers but in blue. Which we've seen. We, we know this. We've seen this in the trailers. I hope one says to Ahsoka. Uh, one other thing. I killed Maul once. Just to capture him. He doesn't seem to stay dead. I get why people are like, well, why do we need this? We know what happened. But when I was watching the episode, I wasn't thinking about what we already knew. I was invested in the episode itself. It, didn't, it doesn't matter that we already know that the chance is getting kidnapped and that Maul lives into Rebels. Because the episode itself is great. And that's what you should focus on, not what's already happened, or what we already know that's happened. So it begins the Siege of Mandalore, the bit everyone was here for. It's a good start, <laughs> and I'm very excited for the rest of the episodes. I think there's four more? I'm not sure. So the Republic forces arrive, or half of these Fire First forces arrive outside Mandalore, and Almec is fuming. Because like the Republic are not supposed to violate the neutrality of Mandalore, but at the same time, Maul is leaving Mandalore. So... Can you see where I'm going with this? Bo Katan's like, yeah, but I don't care if the people of Mandalore hate me, I'm here to free them. I don't give a frick if they hate me. Yeah, so the Republic forces there, they're entering the atmosphere of Mandalore, they're going for the city of Sundari, where Maul is known to be. Ursa Ren is already on Sundari, keeping tabs on everything, you know how it is. So we actually go to the throne room, and there I saw a purple haired female Mandalorian, who I originally thought was Sabine, but then I realised too early for it to be Sabine, because she's only a small child at this point. But she looks like Sabine, so I was a bit confused for a second. But we do see Gar Saxon, the man we saw, who's Lord of the Empire, back on Rebels. And he actually looks sick. He looks better in the Clone Wars than he did in Rebels because of the different art styles. But he looks like a fucking warrior. Like, he actually looks like a strong warrior. If the Clone Wars was done before Rebels, we would have much more of an impact when we saw Gar Saxon in Rebels, but we see him in this and it has more of an impact because we know of him from Rebels. And he looks fucking insane. He's the Maul DeLorean, he's the one with the spiky helmet we find out. Well if you read the comics you might have already known that, but this is the T V shows. Yeah, basically he's Spiky Catboy, the Maul DeLorean. So I'll be calling the Mandalorians low to Maul, the Maul DeLoreans, and the ones under the boat command. All the Mandalorians, okay. Just needed to clear that up. So we know the Mandalorians, they're vicious fighters, both on land and in the air. And the Republic are doing an aerial invasion. So... We can see where this is going. Like, yeah, the clones know how to use jetpacks, but they're not exactly Mandalorians, are they? They're outmatched and outclassed in every way. So the Mandalorians, before going straight into the Republic forces, they fire their missiles at them. It gets a few Republic gunships, gets a few, uh, a few gunships here. We see about four being four being destroyed before we actually see the Mandalorians like engaging full combat where they just smack together. The ones on the Mandalorians, they, you know, immediately get out of the gunships, air to air combat, let's go, this is where they excel. They begin to fight the Maldalorians. Um, the clones are a bit more they don't really want to get into the air, so they stay on their gunships and shoot some of the Maldalorians, but they get, get picked off. No, many of the Maldoroins take over the gunships. Well, they don't kill the pilots, they just stand in the gunships. Which I thought was strange. But I guess it's to get more fantasy points on the clones standing in their gunships. So Ahsoka and Rex, like, they have a bit of banter. So it's like, I'll beat, I'll race to the bottom. So they have a bit of a friendly rivalry going on, which we love to see between the two. They have great chemistry. It's great, it's fun, good fun. So Ahsoka, Ahsoka jumps from gunship to gunship, killing any Mandalorians. Sorry, Maul DeLoreans that she sees. You know, she's taking them out from on top of the gunships, she's taking them out inside the gunships, she's jumping from gunship to gunship, she jumps on a downed gunship, saves the pilot, rides the burning gunship into a landing platform, it explodes, it looks sick, the scene is amazing. She fights Maul DeLoreans, gets a bit pushed back, and the Mandalorians come and like, help her out, they chase off the Maul DeLoreans. So after getting inside the city, they decide to split up. The Mandalorians, they'll go to the throne room, and the clone troopers will find more. 
So they bust into the throne room. We see Almec in his Mandalorian armor, which I must say does look pretty cool. Not gonna lie. And he's a bit he's a bit more of a fighter than I assumed. He's an old man. I didn't think he'd be able to fight, but he actually has some skills. Not a lot, but he does look cool. He can't aim at anyone for shit, but he looks cool. So Almec and Bokanar have a little fight. Bokanar obviously wins. He's an old man. She, she wants to find out what Maul is, but Armex like, You brought the wrong Jedi! They don't bring Kenobi. Maul wants Kenobi. It's his lifelong ambition is to get Kenobi. While this is all going on, Gar Saxon is fighting the clone troopers. They're, they're at a point where they're all surrounded, and the clones are actually winning. They've taken over the docks. They're moving on the Mandalorians. So Saxon's like, Yo, alright. He contacts Almec. Almec says, Go to the Ember City. That's where Maul is. So that's what they do. A few of the, the, the remaining Mandalorians, more DeLoreans under the command of Saxon, retreat to the Undercity. And the clones follow them, obviously. So we, this is what introduced to Commander Vaughn, by the way. He's a new 501st commander. He looks cool. This is the only time we're going to see him. So, yeah. <laughs> Rip. So Vaughn contacts Ahsoka, telling her... Or, no, he contacts Rex, telling them that they have, think they know where Maul is. So Ahsoka goes to where Vaughn and his little company of 501st troops are. They're at a little entrance to the Undercity. It's like a smaller version of the um, giant... Was it the portal in Coruscant? It's a smaller version of one of them, really, and has a lift. It leads to like a massive pipeline. So Vaughn's like, We followed Saxon's forces here, but he escaped into the tunnel. And so they wait for Ahsoka, and they enter the tunnels. So There's a labyrinth of tunnels. They don't know what they're doing. They don't know where they're going. They don't know what they're getting into. So they're sneaking around a bit being very quiet, taking it very slowly. See the Mordorians, Rook, the one who I thought was Sabine, hiding. They've seen the clones, they're ambushing them. So Rook steps out, fires a rocket, Ahsoka kind of deflects it into the roof, killing like a clone or two. So the clones give chase, Ahsoka's like, forward, wait! But obviously they've run off. She was knocked down by the explosion, so she's kind of behind them. By the time they've all run off, she doesn't know where they are. She like follows the bas blasters and they're shouting. Obviously the clones are getting cut down by these Mandalorians. They're much better fighters than they are. They have the, the, the element of surprise on them. It follows the cries to this, cent this like central part, similar to where they went in. Lead to that part. You see the massive clones. Vaughn dies. And the Psyker is surrounded by Mandalorian Mordalorians. Sorry. And now we see Maul. And he says his classic. Why? Are you here? And then it ends. Just like my screen turning off. That's where the episode ends. I'm very excited for what's to come. It was a great episode. Definitely one of my favourites. If not my favourite of the series. I think everyone's going to be liking the Mandalorian arc. That is why everyone's watching after all. What did you think? Tell me down below. Thank you for 900 subscribers. I'm like 100 away from doing an unusual hack giveaway. It's insane. Thank you for the support. It means so much to me. And I continue to support me past 1,000 subscribers. Should we ever hit that milestone? It's actually looking probable now. I never thought we'd get to this point, but thank you. Wow. Hey, oh, uh, uh, I've been up for like two hours. Two hours. Yo, bitch, can food took a few showers. Few showers. I don't buy my just money dance. Yeah. That wristwatch costs a hundred grand.